So right now the Hajj pilgrimage is happening uh, in Mecca. and So every Muslim has to go to Mecca at some point and do the Hajj. That is the pilgrimage there. And there is a ritual, five different things that you have to do. You have to go around the Kaaba and then you have to throw stones at the at three pillars. And they represent the devil and you're supposed to be fighting the devil and, fighting and throwing stones at him. So now the issue is uh, a lot of people go there at the same time. Uh, three years back, 2012, there was three million people uh, that had gone to the Hajj at the same time. So now in this case, as they're throwing stones at the pillars, the panic sets in. Some are moving a little too fast or a little too slow. It's unclear because of the mayhem. And a stampede happens. Now this happened before. In this case, uh, it is the worst in 25 years. 717 people killed. 863 injured. Now this year uh, there was 2 million attendees of the Hajj. So when there's 2 million people in one city all doing the same thing, that is a very, very hard crowd to control. So they brought in thousands upon thousands of people, 10,000 overall, partly because they are worried about terrorism and security, but also because of situations like this. It's not like it hasn't happened before. It's happened many times before. In fact, in 2006, at least 346 people died in a stampede, and in the 1990s, 1,426 pilgrims died in a tunnel near the city. Now, the Saudi government has been trying to fix the infrastructure there uh, to better deal with the swarm of people that they get. They've been limiting the number of people coming. That's why it's reduced this year to 2 million people that attended. Um, and they've been rebuilding the bridge around the pillars uh, to make it more safe. They've got more personnel, but nonetheless, it didn't work. Uh, and look, I, I, I'm going to say something uh, that is not nice. Okay, so these people uh, died today, and it's tragic. Uh, but I don't get it. Uh, you know. Religious folks always tell me, like, God works in mysterious ways, and even if he deals you a bad break, well, it's to teach you a life lesson, and then you'll learn from it, etc. Yeah, maybe you'll learn from this lesson, but those 717 people died that day. There's nothing to learn. There's no further mysteries. It wasn't a test by God. They died. They died in a horrible way. I mean, a stampede. People die from suffocation as other people step on them and they can't breathe. And sometimes their bones are broken, etc., as others rush over them in a tidal wave of humanity. So I don't get it. If they went to go celebrate God, where's God? Welcome back. Now we'll take your questions. If you have a question yourself, send it to us at QuranSpeaks.com. So Dr. Shabir, the question that we have today is about uh, the Mecca had stampede, and uh, someone's written in asking, if God existed, then why would he have let people die in such a tragic manner? Hmm. Well, the, the such tragedies do not mean that God does not exist, because we still have very good uh, reasons for thinking that God exists. So we, we have, for example, the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, the moral argument for the existence of God. We have the Quran, which is uh, demonstrably uh, a revelation from the Almighty God. So all of these uh, reasons together convince us that God does exist. Now the question is, why, if, if he exists, why would he or given that he exists, yeah. why would he allow such uh, tragedies to occur? Especially uh, w w with such large numbers of people dying um, when they're trying to worship him. Or, you know, if they were dying when they were committing sins, you might say God has just zapped them out of existence as a punishment and just reward for their, for their sins. But when they're worshiping God, uh, well, first let me register my own sadness uh, and, and reflect the sadness of the Muslim community at, at this tragedy. Uh, it, it, we, we wish it, it wouldn't happen and uh, all measures should be taken to make sure that it does not happen again. Uh, but when such tragedies uh, happen, we try to make sense of it. And some people think it doesn't make any sense at all and maybe God does not exist. Um, now, so let, let's try to make sense of it. Now, if we think about two million people gathering there to perform the pilgrimage, then uh, in a population of two million people, certainly some number will die every day. 
through natural causes and through accidents of a wide variety of kinds. And uh, w I, I don't know what the actual average number is in a country of two million, how many people might no die in, in a particular day. So you, you have to say that uh, here, if you have two million people here, uh, pilgrims, think of that like one country, and some people will naturally die, uh, either through natural causes or through accidents of, of some kind. Uh, and, and this is over a period of uh, maybe pilgrims are there for uh, at least a week, uh, probably two weeks, and perhaps even three weeks. Uh, so over a period of three weeks, daily death rate times uh, 21 days, how many people might you expect to die? And if you work out the figures, it may be, and God knows best, uh, that uh, this number who died in this tragedy, actually there were two tragedies, so we combined the two. First a crane fell crane, on some yeah. uh, people, and uh, now this stampede. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, less than a thousand people altogether, but even if a thousand, perhaps if you worked out the average death rate uh, and multiplied by the 21 days, um, then we may see that this number is not as alarming as it first uh, sounds. So are uh, we normalizing it? In no, some ways? no. Still, still, it is a tragedy, and still we should do our best to avoid uh, such a tragedy because we don't want people to die all at once uh, like this in such a horrible manner, being trampled upon. Uh, but what we're saying that it, it 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 just makes it easier to to understand if we if we put it in this way. Uh, so so that's one point. The second uh, point is that the the Quran itself says that God has His way of uh, of choosing uh, shahada. The, the Arabic word shahada might be translated as martyrs, and uh, there are many uh, ways in which if a person dies, that person qualifies as a martyr, which is one of the most desirable. Uh, ways of leaving this world. We all have to leave this world anyhow. Uh, some leave while committing sins, some uh, leave while uh, in a state of doing good deeds, and some leave by some other tragedy. Um, as not that doing good deeds is a tragedy. So right. some, some leave by, you know, a hadith says that if a wall collapses on somebody, uh, causing that person's death, that person uh, dies as a, as a martyr. So we might look at that and say, this is tragic, the person died, we, let's fix walls and make sure no walls fall on anybody. But the, the silver lining in this dense cloud, this dark cloud, uh, is uh, the fact that this person is given a good reception by, by God. So while this person suffers a tragedy here, that person is well received in the life hereafter and gets an ample reward uh, as a compensation for this tragedy. Uh, now, I said that God chooses his uh, martyrs, and uh, we are told uh, in Hadith that uh, when a person dies while performing the Hajj, uh, the pilgrimage, that person will resurrect on the Day of Judgment, uh, reciting the declaration uh, that one recites when one enters into that state of sacredness uh, to perform the, the pilgrimage rites. And uh, the, the Muslim knows this uh, formula as beginning with labbaik, saying labbaik Allahumma labbaik, uh, which means uh, here I am God at your service, here I am. Uh, so the, uh, imagine the, the glory of uh, resurrecting on the Day of Judgment uh, reciting this very words. formula, whereas other people may be scrambling about, thinking about their sins. People will be perturbed on the Day of Judgment, not knowing where they are and what's going to happen next and where they're going to be sent. And uh, some people will have that solitude uh, of being able to declare uh, a word of faith on that, on that particular day. Leaving this world in that state and entering into the life hereafter is almost like going through a wormhole from this life to the life hereafter, and the life hereafter is a reflection of the way you were right here in this life and the way you, you left this I life. I was also reading online, there were some people that commented saying that when you, um, they were actually praying to die during the sacred pilgrimage. Well, uh, this may be another aspect of it, that when we think about the behavior of the pilgrims um, uh, there, uh, some people may have just accepted it. You know, we, we read stories about the survivors saying, you know, I struggled, I rose, we were gasping for breath, and somebody rescued me, and, you know, thank God for that. But uh, th there may be some people who, uh, in a situation like that, have just resigned themselves and said, okay, it looks like my death is coming now and better now than in some other circumstance. I just accept it and don't fight it. Maybe, maybe that contributed uh, to the large number of deaths. And I don't recommend for Muslims to do that. We have a, a responsibility to preserve life 
and uh, our own lives in particular and lives of others and uh, we should not endanger ourselves and others but some people may have actually resigned themselves to, to death when they saw it coming. Thank you very much Dr. Shabir. You're welcome.